As the third oldest automotive company in the world, Tatra has a long history of car, truck and even bus manufacturing since 19th century. Automobiles were mainly targeted for higher society, trucks were amongst the best in the business, and their race cars were like no ones before or after ever had. Yeah, Tatra is different, and that's the beauty of it. MTX Tatra V8 The MTX stands for Metalex, which was a company with which Tatra cooperated to create this supercar. The layout was typical rear-wheel drive, rear mid-engine, with an enlarged air-cooled V8. There was a carbureted version too, with almost 80 horsepower disadvantage. However, the MTX was capable of 265k pH of top speed. Originally, a 100-piece production run was planned, but eventually only three running examples exist in hands of private owners. Tatra 77 the Tatra 77 was a huge sensation during the introduction. No car was developed in a wind tunnel before, and in combination with a reasonable weight, the top speed of 145 km per hour was great with just 60 horsepower. It was an overhead valve unit, but there was a type called T77A with an overhead cam and 15 more horsepower. An interesting fact is that its successor, the T87, was more than 300 kg lighter. Tatra 813 The modularity of the T813 is renowned, as from a 4x4, you were able to get as much as 8x8 chassis with up to 100 ton of towing capacity with 6x6. The engine was named as the T930, sourced from the T928 V8 with 4 more cylinders. Naturally, it was a naturally aspirated air-cooled diesel, which has a beautiful sound under high load. Besides civil and army versions, firefighters had their red model as well. Tatra 603 The 603 is one of the most beautiful cars of the 50s. It also is the most popular car of this brand with over 20,000 specimens built, usually driven by high society people. Typically, there was a big air-cooled V8 at the back with 911-like oversteer behavior and very aerodynamic shape of the vehicle. They were even used in track races such as Nürburgring. Tatra 815 As a 813 successor, the 815 wasn't as aggressive and capable in off-road as the outgoing model. However, the chassis was a lot more modular, with the 4x4 base and ability to add axles up to 12x12. There was a big selection of engines available with Deutz, Cummins, MTU, Detroit or CAT units. 
In-house power plants were there too, with atmospheric aspiration, air cooling and louder soundtrack than your straight pipe Honda. Tatra 607 monopost Would have been there an event this 607 monopost were racing in, I would be supporting it. Yes, it is kinda love as Tatra was partially a Slovak manufacturer, now a pure Czech one, and this model seemed F1 ready. Engine wise it lacks some displacement to perform anyhow comparably, but nevertheless it served as an engine testing vehicle only. <laughs> Tatra 148 The 148 model was introduced as a redesigned and improved 138, especially in power, speed and reliability. The stroke of the engine was enlarged by 10mm, increasing the displacement by 1 litre. It was paired to a main and auxiliary transmission within the same box with a switchable middle diff. Compared to the 813 or 815 series, the 148 was cheaper on service costs. I would say that either you love Tatra or you have never heard about it. Generally speaking, they are reliable, sturdy and durable, although the bus I have mentioned, the 500HB, couldn't be described by neither. Anyhow, seeing a Tatra always makes me happy. What about you? As usually, feel free to subscribe and stay cool. Cheers.